Hello fellow ant keepers. Today I will talk about live feeding and why I do not feed my ants live insect feeders. I also get these questions from time to time, after each explanation, it always ends in doubt. Some may even lead to a minor debate. Live food items are often fed to exotic pet species, whether they be birds, amphibians, reptiles, or mammals. Does that mean that omnivorous species like ants must be fed live prey? Many omnivores such as ants also feed in part on live or dead animals. Because of this practice, many invertebrates live and die as prey to the ants, spending the last moments of their life in terror and torturous pain. As you all know, from all my videos and Facebook posts, my feeder insects are all pre-killed first, mostly by way of dipping or boiling in hot water. Like I said many times before, there is no right or wrong way to feed your pet ants. It is all from experience and my personal outlook on life itself. It has been years, I only practiced pre-killed insect feeders method. Well, at least intentionally for my own personal and colonies. Okay, so you have seen many live ants feeding on YouTube, mostly with thousands of views and a lot of thumbs up. Frankly, I am with most of the people who like the video as well. It is simple, I like seeing ants react to live prey, that does not mean that I should feed my own ants live insect feeders. Again, it is my personal mindset. For over 3 minutes you have been watching my diacama ants trying to bring down a mealworm. This is just to show you an example of a live feeding and how ants would actually react to the prey. You all know about their fearsome reputation, but watch how long they will attempt to kill it. Do keep in mind that I am showing you this to make a point. Even such as small invertebrates, they took a long time. Anyway, the mealworm is removed and dispatched. Ants killing a live insect is part of the natural order, I can agree to that, and that brings me further into the discussion of keeping pets that are dear to us. First and foremost, the colonies of ants that I am keeping is dear to me. I treat them like I would treat my other pets. For instance, my dog was a bull terrier breed, they are an extremely powerful dog and are bred for vermin control and animal-based blood sports in the past. Now that you know about this breed, I do not bring my dogs to hunt rats or little critters. Although with the natural killer instinct, but I do not feed blood-smeared meat to my dog. I think you know what I am trying to explain, hope I have given a good analogy. On the ethical part of ants feeding, giving the insect a quick death is the most honorable thing to do. The feeders are destined to be given as food, however, to life feed in a captive setting there is no fair chance for them to potentially flee or ward off attacker. Here, the ants are the, the attackers and the odds are unfairly in the ants' favor. That is one of the reasons I always pre-kill by dipping in boiling water or freezing which is a relatively painless way to euthanize an insect. Of course there will be some that are totally against feeding live feed or pre-killed one. Yes there are many fair reasons, these invertebrates are born and bred to be consumed, often living in stressful or painful conditions. They are then released into the habitat of their predator, a strange and alien environment where they often can find no food, water, or shelter. Finally, they are hunted by a predator for seconds and even minutes before being stung, poisoned, swarmed, and dismembered. This is because many people falsely believe that invertebrates, lacking brains and nervous systems, and they do not suffer pain. I do not believe this is true. For other reasons why I do not live feed are to prevent my ants from injuring themselves. The live insects that you put into the nest will try their utmost best to stay alive that is to jump, flick, rattle, crawl or bite. Having them do that will definitely spell death to some of the smaller species of ants. Having them to crawl into the nesting area is a major disaster, and they can wreak havoc and damage the broods. The worst that can happen is injuring the queen. At the very beginning of ant keeping, 
I generally feed my ants by breaking their heads and dropping in, but sometimes they don't completely immobilize. They can still do some destruction in the nest. Removing the head and cutting it in half will open them up so, smaller ants can easily get at their flesh with little effort. They do take a while to stop moving when fed this way without boiling water. It is just how invertebrates react, after decapitation. Feeding roach nymphs or red runners, usually, I will put them in a container, and shake them up before putting them in the nest. This way will render them unconscious. They don't need to go through the effort of hot water, unless you find them outside. Finally, the possibility of parasites and a fungal outbreak. Many keepers have the habit of feeding wild insects to their colony of ants, but I must advise to boil them before giving them as they may carry parasites. Mites are one of them, hard to get rid of in a colony. Even if there is a remedy, ants are not like dogs where you can take to a vet to have a tick shampoo bath. In another scenario, life feeders can crawl into places where the ants cannot reach. The feeders could die there and fungus will spawn. There are in cases where keepers are not able to retrieve the corpse at all. The other reason is, for example, observing the trapped jaw ants, they are having a hard time killing this worm. Yes, eventually they will kill it, but precious energy is wasted in the killing. This is just one worm, having to put in many at the same time could take hours to kill off all of them. That is just the killing part and breaking into the hard body to get to the precious protein is another effort there. Before they can even have a fresh kill, flesh of the insect will turn black and start to rot, eventually they will ignore the unfinished food. Rotting will set in very quickly for a nest with high humidity. Eventually, attracting flies and fungal growth. All that energy spent just for a meager quantity of fresh protein. In conclusion, for me personally, life feeding of any animals is an inhumane practice that must be avoided whenever possible. It is only justified if a predator absolutely cannot be trained to eat anything but live prey. I hope my video here has made some sense as to why I do not feed live feeders, and most general and keepers don't either. I think I made my statement quite clear and I believe after this, we will give some care and sensitivity towards our insect feeders, minimizing all suffering. Thank you for watching. Ants Subang.